get to be you were the king of kings yeah you were yeah you were and now you're reigning still enthroned above all things angels and saints cry out we join them as we sing glory to god glory to god glory to god forever glory to god glory to god glory to god forever yeah creator god you gave me breath so i could praise your great and matchless name all my days all my days so let my whole life be a blazing offering a life that shall i 
Good morning, and once again, welcome to our online worship service. This is getting more and more difficult every week to preach to an empty sanctuary, but we are glad that you are gathering with us from wherever you are this morning. And we hope and pray that our live feed is working. If it's not, you'll see the recording in a couple of hours, and uh, we are doing our best to work out the technology glitches We're glad that you're with us wherever you are, and we are with you as the Holy Spirit draws us together from all different corners of our community and our country. We pray in this moment that you are well and healthy and safe. I will tell you that I am working on going through the directory to call each and every one of you, so if I haven't gotten to you yet, I promise I will. And as we gather and worship today, we gather around the Word of God on which we stand, as we join together in Psalm 118 on this Palm Sunday, verses 22 to 29. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it's marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God. And he has made his light shine on us with the bows in his hand. Join us in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray this day, as we are apart, that you draw us together. We pray that we would have a spirit of worship in our homes and at our tables and in this place. We pray that we would sing your praises, Hosanna, Lord, save us now. Come, Lord Jesus, fill our hearts, that we may be filled with your Spirit for your good work in this world. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us join together in singing hymn number 300, All Glory, Loud, and Honor. Friends, we know that we have fallen short of the glory of God. We know that in all things, God's grace is needed in our lives. And so today we join together in our prayer of confession, knowing that we are in need of grace and that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. 
Let's join together in a prayer of confession. O Lord, who on this day entered the rebellious city that later rejected you, we confess that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's, that our faith is often more show than substance, that our hearts are in need of cleansing. Have mercy on us, Son of David, Savior of our lives. Help us to lay at your feet that all that we have, all that we are, trusting you to forgive what is sinful, to heal what is broken, to welcome our praises, and to receive us as your own. Give us your grace, O God, that we may receive your forgiveness that is poured out on us. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, we know that in all things, it is the beginning of this holy week that Jesus goes to the cross for us and sets us free from our sin. Through his death and resurrection, we join him in eternal life. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Thanks be to God. seated. We're going to have a moment uh, for the children. So if the children are nearby, uh, I want to make sure you grab them real quick because this is their children's sermon, something that we're adding to the repertoire and our Sunday live streaming. Um, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to the TV, the family room. Uh, this morning, as usual, I have an object for you. It is my daily planner. See, this morning is Palm Sunday, and that is uh, a wonderful Sunday to celebrate as we usually have palms that we're waving in our hands above our heads, and we're singing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And see, the people at that time were celebrating Jesus coming into the city, and as he rode, they would raise up their hands asking Jesus for help. And they wanted his help in the worst way because they were, they were looking around and seeing that they were in bondage. And they were in bondage with Rome. And see, they wanted to be set free. And so Jesus was there and uh, the people wanted him to get right down off that donkey and defeat Rome right away. They wanted to be set free that day right now and that was their plan. And just like that plan, I have lots of plans. I have a lot of these books saved in my office, and I'm not sure why I keep them all. I have like 16 of these books filled with all my plans. But really, at the end of the day, that's just what they are. They're just my plans. And sometimes my plans don't match God's plans. And so we really, really, really need to focus uh, our, ourselves on God and what his plans may be for our lives. So sometimes when you go and you want to play Play-Doh, and Mom and Dad say, no, it's not time to play Play-Doh. It can be hard to hear that, and it can be difficult when you're told that, no, it's, it's time to go to bed, or it's time to clean up. But know that, as adults, we still get disappointed when plans change and when plans get canceled. But we have to know that God has a bigger plan for our hearts. And so next time you hear about or think about your plans and what you want to do and you get frustrated when something gets canceled, remember that we're not always in charge of everything and God is bigger than that. We do have a few announcements that we want to make and they should be 
running on the screen, at least I hope they are, uh, but you're going to have to give me some what's up first, prayer. Uh, we are going to continue the prayer group at 3 o'clock on Tuesdays. If you could stop what you're doing, maybe set an alarm, 3 o'clock on Tuesday afternoons, you can join us, all of us, in prayer, uh, 15 or 30 minutes, uh, prayer for our community, prayer for our people, for our frontline people who are doing all of this amazing work for our community right now. And if you feel like there's nothing you can do in this moment, one of the things you can do is to pray. Uh, we have, uh, I need some direction from the back because I can't see. What's next? So right now we, uh, we have decided as the session that, uh, and as the church, and it's really not up to us because the stay-at-home orders are in place, that as long as the stay-at-home orders are in place, all in-person activity in the church is, is, uh, is suspended. Also, while the office is functioning and operating, the church is currently closed to the public. And so please do not come to the church to carry out your business. You can call us. We're here from 9 to noon, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You can send in your your uh, tithes and offerings, we will make sure that they get to the bank. And so our staff is still working, but uh, we, we please, please do not come to the church to handle any of the business that is happening. This week is Holy Week, is Palm Sunday, as we begin uh, this Holy Week in new and different circumstances. So we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, we will be having a meditation live here from the sanctuary on Thursday evening, at 7 o'clock, it will just be meditations with me, uh, and um, Good Friday, I'll be doing a video devotion that will be up on our website and on Facebook for you uh, to meditate on Good Friday. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll join live once again from the sanctuary at 10 a.m. We're going to continue that 10 a.m. time slot until this stay-at-home order is lifted on Sunday mornings. 10 a.m., and so we hope you'll join us for Easter worship. And I just want to encourage you, and this may sound weird, but next Sunday on Easter, get dressed up for church. Uh, and I know it's going to be happening in your living rooms or your kitchen table, but let's add some normalcy. Maybe send some pictures uh, to us that we can post to the church uh, of your family or of you uh, having church, and, and so we can, social media-wise, at least continue to connect with one another. Uh, Mike is going to be hopefully pulling together a, uh, a video that we'll share on Easter Sunday. And what we want to ask of you is to make a one-minute video about how Jesus has changed your life or how Jesus has affected you or just how you're doing right now in this moment. And uh, we want to play that video so that all of us can see and get connected to one another even though we're apart. So you can email that video to mbarton at meridianprez. Org. It's not on the slide because we just decided this morning that we we're going to do that, but we'll send out an email uh, with more information for the church. But email that video, 30 seconds, a minute to, uh, to Mike, and he'll put that together. We'll show it on Easter Sunday as part of our live broadcast. At least that's our hope. The next thing is Wednesday, uh, Zoom Bible Studies, 9 a.m. The link is in your emails. Uh, and you can join us on a study of First Peter if you haven't been able to do so. We had about 20 people on the call this past Wednesday. We'd love to have you join us, and we're going to continue that as long as the season progresses. And the last thing is tithes and offerings. So many of you have sent in your offerings to the church, and we so appreciate that so that the church can continue to function uh, and do the work that we need to do. Uh, and, and so we really very much appreciate your generous and continue generous giving to the church. You can donate online uh, through our uh, online giving on our website, meridianpres.org, or you can continue to mail those checks to the church, and we will get them deposited. We are so grateful for your generosity in this time. Friends, let's join in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day of worship, this day that we can gather as the church, even though we are apart. We know you are with us. Father, we pray that your glory would be made known as we worship you this day, as we participate together in your glory. Father God, we pray this day for our world and for our community. We lift up uh, so many people in our church who are nurses and, and grocery store workers and those on the front line, and we, we pray that you would strengthen them right now. They are so tired and exhausted, so worried. We pray that you would cover them in your protection and your love. 
And we give you thanks for their great and faithful work in our community. Father, we pray for all of those who are sick and in need of your healing touch. That in this moment of worry and fear and anxiety, that your will would be made known through us. And Father, today I pray for my family and myself as we mourn the loss of my Uncle Fred, my pastor growing up and and a man who meant so much to me and to my faith. While we cannot gather, we pray that you would give our family a sense of your peace that you have spoken into his life this day. Well done, good and faithful servant, as you welcome him into your kingdom. As we take a moment to pray silently before you, we ask you to hear those unspoken prayers of our hearts. Through the storm, O oh God, you are the one who speaks peace into our troubled souls. May you calm the storm within, even though the storm is raging around us. Strengthen us for these days. Give us a hope and a future. And let us let go of the expectations we had and live into the God that you are. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, reading verses 9 through 13. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, And the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you I will bend Judah as I bend my bow and will fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your son Zion against your son's Greece and make you like a warrior sword. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us sing together, Be Still My Soul. My soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the
Second reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 35 through 41. Here now the reading of God's holy word. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And as he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God, and let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your word on this Palm Sunday. May we sing your praises. And may we weep with you. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on whose word we stand forever. Amen. Many of you know that I am a well-planned-out person. And uh, the last three weeks have thrown us into a bit of a tizzy, and we've gone off script, which was needed and necessary. But as I sat down and started to reflect on today's sermon, I couldn't help but go back to where we had been, what we had been planned for, because it just seemed appropriate. Palm Sunday is a very poetic day for us in this moment right now. We started a series which seems like three years ago (laughs) in the season of Lent. And in that series, it was called Giving Up and Letting Go as we were taking the ideas and the concepts around the season of Lent and of fasting and of lament and getting rid of the things in our lives that didn't draw us deeper into the heart of God. So those were the things that we were going to give up and let go of. And it really was a pretty decent sermon series, I think, giving up anger and jealousy and and all of these things that are not of the Spirit of God, but we scratched it. But as I read the title for today that was planned, it was called Giving Up Expectations. And it seemed appropriate for the world that we are currently in and the world that we are facing. Everything has changed. In a matter of a few weeks, Everything has changed, and what we expected to be and what is, is not the same. You know, I'm getting pretty sick of preaching to an empty sanctuary. All the things that I normally do during Holy Week have been turned upside down. Everything that I expected is no longer. How do we live in this new reality? How do we deal with with these broken expectations. And Palm Sunday speaks that into our lives. It can't be any surprise to you that Laura and I have fallen away from being up to date on pop culture. Over the last, the more kids we've added into our lives, the further and further away we've gotten from pop culture, which I'm okay with, I'm not complaining about. So, But as this pandemic hit and we all went on lockdown and had to stay in our homes, of course, we're turning to Netflix like everybody else to entertain us when we have a moment. And so we put it out there on social media a few weeks ago that give us ideas of things to watch because we don't know. So why don't you fill us in? And I can't get over how many people told me to watch this documentary called Tiger King. Now, I know that I've lost a couple of you already. Just hang in there because it's not about Tiger King. People were building this thing up all over Facebook and social media like this was the greatest documentary you're ever going to see in your life, which only proves the fact that we're all going insane. Laura and I watched one episode of it. I may finish it. It's intriguing. It's a story about a guy who, uh, who uh, 
has a big cat zoo. He has 227 tigers. And you get to go and hold baby tigers and kittens and whatever. And then it's, he's pitted against this lady who has a cat sanctuary, although she's not all that different. And it's like murder for hire. And there's murder intrigue in this whole thing. It is just whacked out. It's crazy. But it has stormed the world as we've all gone inside. You know, as I was watching it, with all these built-up expectations of people telling me how great it was, the whole time I'm watching it, I'm going, eh, eh, it is okay. But I could care less if I saw the rest of it. Now, this happens to me all the time, and I'm sure it happens to you too. People build up movies or TV shows, you've got to see it, it's it's the greatest thing ever, and then you finally get around to it, and you watch it, and you go, eh, why does that happen to us? It happens because the higher the expectations are, the more that we, the more that we raise up to the same level, right? We, we raise up our own expectations, and then nothing can actually really live up to what we thought it should be. This happens to us all the time. I've had so many movies ruined by people telling me there was the greatest thing on earth that I just had to see it. Expectations got built up, and then end up not living up to the hype. I'd rather go in fresh. Don't tell me anything. There's a whole Seinfeld episode about that, right? Like, don't, don't ruin it, even with expectation. I want to just go in totally fresh. We do this not just with movies and TV. We do this with life. We do this with faith. We do this in relationships. We plan our lives, and all plans are our expectations. A plan is we think this is how it should be. And we build up those expectations in our lives because there's something about the human soul and the human mind that craves structure. And when that structure gets broken, that structure gives us expectations, and when that structure gets broken and the whole world comes to a screeching halt and everything that we expected it to be is no longer, well, it's quite a struggle. It sends us into anxiety. It sends us into fear. And the worst part about where we are right now is we have no idea when it will end. It's not like, oh, we can just do this for two weeks. We know that this is going to be longer. And so our expectations are starting to go the other way into the negative. Palm Sunday is this incredible story that we're all very familiar with. But I call it a poetic story for today because the reality is Palm Sunday is a story of broken expectations, plans for life and for Jesus that are going to come crashing down. It's a story we all know, right? We're all familiar with. We say it every year, (laughs) except for this year. We generally join in here and wave palm branches and talk about the Hosanna and the joy of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But there's nothing really triumphal about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. So often we hear on Palm Sunday sermons, and I've been hearing it my whole life, and only till recently I went, that's not true. We, we hear this, uh, the people that praised him on Sunday or the people that crucified him on Friday. Friends, that's not true. The people that praised him on Sunday are the people that believe that Jesus was ushering in a new kingdom, that Jesus was doing something new, that he was coming to restore the kingdom of Israel to its former glory. That he was going to take the throne of David, he was, going to, he was a revolutionary that was going to remove Rome and Roman oppressors from their country, and he was going to make all things right as it should be. You see, the people that praised him on Sunday were the people that believed he was the Messiah coming to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament, one of which we read in Zechariah today. Jesus was going to restore the kingdom of Israel. And that triumphal entry, as we call it, are disciples and followers of Jesus who have witnessed the miracles of Jesus, singing his praises and glory, thinking they're on their way to the throne. That this is the moment 
the pinnacle of Jesus' life and ministry to the point where he now is going to restore Israel to where it should be. That is why they're singing his praises. It's why they're crying out, Hosanna. It is why they're, they're saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The disciples and the followers of Jesus have very high expectations for this moment. In the story in Luke on Palm Sunday, Jesus tells his disciples to go out ahead of them, two of them, into the city. There they'll find a colt, the foal of a donkey. Untie it and bring it to me. When the master asks you what you're doing, you just reply, the Lord needs it. And the disciples do exactly as Jesus said. And as exactly as Jesus said what happened, the master said, what are you doing? They said, the Lord needs it. And they bring this colt back to Jesus. And they take off their cloaks and they lay it down on top of the donkey so that Jesus can ride it into the city. But the imagery should stand out for us, the symbolism of this imagery. Because Jesus is not on a white horse as a conquering king riding into the city with swords and an army. Right? They wanted a conquering king. But the symbolism for us is that what they get is the suffering servant. And we know that. They just don't know it yet. Jesus rides into the city not on a white horse, but on a baby donkey. Let that sit in. He comes as the suffering servant. And his disciples begin laying down their cloaks on the road and those who were following them and some people in the city began to sing his praises. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. As they come down the the road from the Mount of Olives and in towards the city of Jerusalem. They believe it is a parade of the coming Messiah. Their praises are justified. Their joy, their joy is necessary and good. It's their expectations that are missing. Friends, like the disciples, we too often are justified in our praise of God. We too are justified in the joy that is deep in our souls, even in the midst of fear and struggle. But we too often struggle with the expectations that we put on who we think God should be, rather than who God is. The Palm Sunday story of Matthew. The word that Matthew uses over and over again, the one that we say every year, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That word Hosanna, we we use it often as a praise in our culture and context. But Hosanna actually is a lament. Literally translated in the Greek, Hosanna means rescuer, savior. When the people on Palm Sunday are crying out to Jesus, what they're crying out for is rescue us, Lord. Save us now. Rescue. The expectation on the Messiah is that he was going to rescue them. What they expected was that he would rescue them from Rome. What they didn't understand is that he had come to rescue them from themselves. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God our Father. the expectations that are shattered. But that's the beauty of the story, isn't it? Because what they expected Jesus to be 
and what they wanted him to be and what they needed him to be were two very different things. What we expect Jesus to be and who Jesus is is often two very different things. How we expect God to show up and work in our lives and how he actually does are not always the same. It's hard not to look at this moment and think this is not how life is supposed to be. Because in an instant, we as a culture and as a world have learned a very hard lesson that no matter how much technology we have, no matter how smart we are, there are things that happen around us that we cannot control. And when our expectations get shattered, we actually turn to God and we say, why? Why would you do this? Why would you let that happen? Because we often think that God's role in our lives is to fulfill the expectations we have rather than us living into the expectations he has given to us. And so when things like this happen, when the world comes to a screeching halt, when the world seems to be shattering down around us in these moments, when we're stuck and fearful and afraid, when our expectations are gone, when the world is hopeless, when dreams have been shattered, which is exactly where we are right now, it actually opens us up to the possibility to see how God is actually working in our lives right now. The cries of Hosanna come from a place of desperation. Save us. Because as we look around at the world and our lives, we can't help but say right now in this moment, it's not supposed to be this way. But that's the beauty of the Palm Sunday story. Because as Jesus is in this entry into Jerusalem and his disciples think they're in a parade to coronate the new king, the one who is coming to set them free, Jesus looks over the city and he weeps. He weeps. It doesn't sound like a triumphal entry when the one who is being praised weeps. We don't know why. The text doesn't tell us why Jesus weeps over Jerusalem that day. I think that's on purpose. I think God left that open for us as something that we can continue to interpret and to see in our world right now. Some people think that Jesus weeps because he knows he's about to go to the cross, but that might be true. But I think it's more than that. I think Jesus weeps because he understands the weight of glory. I think Jesus weeps because he knows as he looks over the city of Jerusalem, this is not supposed to be this way. I think he weeps because he sees what sin and death and destruction have brought on the human soul. I think he weeps because he knows there are some who will reject what he is about to do for them. Because they won't let their expectations fall down so they can see the true God who is in their midst. I think he weeps because Jesus lays his heart down with the world. And in this moment, even though we live as people of hope, even though we live with the joy of the kingdom, the appropriate response of the church right now with the world is to weep over it. Because we're right. It's not supposed to be this way.
The cries of desperation should ring through the hearts of Christians all over the world. Hosanna, rescue us, save us now, O oh God. May our expectations on who Jesus is supposed to be be destroyed in this moment. That we might live into the reality of who Jesus is and how he is working, bringing about his redemption in this world. Expectations and plans are fickle things, which is hard for a type A person to say. You know, when you go into ministry, you expect a lot of things, like you expect conflict in the church, because, you know, that's just part of the deal. You expect to deal with people from the cradle to the grave. That's just what your job is. You expect to have to lead and, and do all kinds of different things. But once you get into it, and I think it's like this in every job, like you get prepped for it, but then once you get into it, it's not what you thought it would be. That's happened to me all the time. All the time. <laughs> in the last uh, two weeks, three weeks, I have had to learn uh, technology that I've never had to learn before. And it's been stressful and hard work. We're, we're trying. Hopefully, I'll pray, I pray that right now it's working and working correctly. I've had to uh, fill out applications and be on the phone with bankers trying to help the church be settled in this uncertain time and I've had to be an accountant. <laughs> and I've had to do uh, pastoral care by phone which is a really weird and odd place to be and, and all that we have expected life to be, all that we knew on how the church should work and function is just gone. And over the last three weeks, we've had to learn how to do everything differently and everything new. And you know what? Over the last three weeks, I have seen the glory of God in so many different ways that I would have never seen before. Friends, right now, on this Palm Sunday, we live in this image of those who shouted Hosanna. Those who praised the king because they thought he was doing what they wanted, what they expected, but then get open to the new reality that he has come to do so much more. For in the depths of our souls and the cries of our hearts, shout Hosanna on behalf of the world. Lord, come and save us now. And may we see him at work in new ways. It causes us once again to wave with joy and let our praises rise to heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, let's join in a response to the hearing of God's word by stating what we believe as the church, the core of our belief in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and He sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, as we go from this worship place, as we close our computers or shut off our phones, as we go into the rest of this Sunday, may we drop the expectations we had for life and for God and live into the reality of his promises with us this day.
May our praises rise to the Lord of heaven and earth who has come to set us free. May we cry out, Hosanna, Savior, Rescuer. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. As we go, may God be gracious unto you and make his face to shine upon you. And until that day, which will happen, we meet again. May he hold you in the palm of his hand. As we go in the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of the Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, let us sing together. Lead on, O King Eternal.